Uh, last night, millions of us watched uh, a very brave and courageous Kate Garraway as she let TV cameras into her home for the documentary Finding Derek, um, her husband Derek. It was a heartbreaking programme and it gave us an insight into their family's life as Derek fights to recover from coronavirus in hospital. Oh, I, you know, I, I watched it last night um, and obviously I, I knew it was coming up and I knew we were going to talk about it today. And I thought, what can I say? What can I say? I mean, the, the strength, the courage of Kate, of Derek, of the whole family, it, it was humbling. And I thought, what, what is it? How is she carrying on? And, you know, it's not like me to be, you know, over emotional, but I guess it's love. That's what's keeping that family going, what, what, Brenda? Yeah, I mean, the, I was just taken back by the, the, the positivity that she showed. And, you know, as you say, love can keep everybody together. And if, you, if you're all together on the same page, then, you know, that's half the battle with, with any illness, to be, to be quite perfectly honest. I think for everyone who watched it, it probably would stir up something different. What, what did it stir up for you, Jen? Oh, it... I... First of all, I was really moved by her courage and her determination to hold on to him. And you could see uh, that it was made doubly difficult because she wasn't there in person and it had to be done through screens and phones and everything else. And she had to communicate with doctors like that as well. So it was unspeakably difficult and she was just a heroine. And it brought back for me um, personal memories. I had uh, my husband made a documentary about his son who suffered enormous physical and uh, mental difficulties, and and he did he held on to that son and held on. And I saw the same love between Kate uh, and and Derek. And also it, it reminded me of the tragic end of my um, nephew who entered a coma, who who collapsed and never came out of a coma. And I remember being in the hospital when he was on the life support and willing him, willing him to pull through. Mm. Uh, and that's all you can do. But, you yeah. know, I'm so moved by what I saw on television last night. Well, I mean, so many families have been tested, haven't they? Yes. And, and their family has been tested. And, of course, the kids have been tested. Um, you know, here's just another little clip. Um, just watching Kate with her kids was really moving. Do you want to quickly say hi to, to Bill? Hi. Wait, wait. Um, do you remember the Millennium Falcon that we did? I'm building it. OK, hang on. Do you want to see them being ridiculous? Okay, really, this is our lift that we've invented. Three, two, one, go. Oh. I've had oh. the time of my life. It's a dirty dancing lift. It's all safe. I'll see you tomorrow. I love you, darling. Uh, Darcy and Bill. Gloria, I think it was the kids that really resonated with you, yeah? Well, everything resonated with me because... Um, and I, I just want to say that no matter what you're dealing with here, it will resonate with, I think, people right across the country, whether it is as Derek is coping and has coped for the last um, year and whether he will continue to cope, as all of that was raised. But if it's cancer or if it's... Uh, dementia, whatever it is, it will resonate. And with me, of course, it resonated very much uh, when Karen had her cancer. And I thought that last night's documentary showed, I, I thought it was brilliant and I was very emotionally disturbed by it because it shows the two sides of a situation like this. It shows marvelous Derek, the way he's clinging on and he's been um, looked after so well by the NHS, etc. At the same time, it shows the helplessness, if you like, um, from a parent's point of view, uh, in that you you do feel helpless because you want to do so much more, but you can't, and that was our case with Karen. The only thing you can do is to make sure they have good medical care, et cetera. But the other aspect which you touched on was the resilience of the children. You know, um, our little boys, you know, when Karen went to Australia at one point, uh, when she was at maybe three years into her seven-year battle, and I was really like emotionally struck by the way they were one minute they would be almost crying about mommy and why is mommy in bed so much and stuff and the next minute they're jumping up and down the trampoline they're so resilient and children in the end show you the way and the person at the middle of it all the person who is doing the battling against cancers in Derek's case in the end they become the teachers because what I discovered is and my question was 
where does everybody get the strength from in the end? The strength of Derek to keep pushing, the strength of Kate with her kids and her emotion. So it's, it's a lesson, and I just to finish on that, I just think that if, if anybody was feeling, well, I'm not going to get, I'm never going to get the jab, I think last night's documentary, I know if I hadn't had my jab, I'd be saying, give it to me as soon as you can, because COVID is a shocking disease, as we saw through Derek last night, and Kate was just wonderful. Yeah, I mean, strength. I mean, I said it, it just spoke to me and said love. Uh, the other thing is, is strength. And then towards the end of the documentary, we see that there is real, there is real cause for, for hope and that strength is really bringing dividends. And, and obviously we have to hope that, that Derek will make a recovery. But I think Kate appreciates that their life will probably be changed. Never the same again. I mean, I think, unfortunately, I've, I've dealt with it on the child side with being an orphan so um, at such a young age and having my family shielding me effectively because they thought that that was the right thing to do. Um, and then I've had it from my breast cancer diagnosis and what to do, the right thing to do for my children. And I'm glad that I included them and I was open and honest with them so that they could feel that they were part of what was going on with me and any questions, they're not scared to come forward and ask me. And I, I think children, you know, they're, as Gloria says, they're very resilient mm. and and, you know, I think it's it's more a case of you, you've just got to... With, with my children, they their positivity kept me positive. And I think watching Kate's um, documentary, her children were so positive and, and they had that bright outlook that's bound to help to lift up the yeah. spirits, which, yeah. you know, I think is really important. Did the kids keep you going, Glow? Well, I think also it depends on the age of the children. Yes, of course, kids keep you up and you have to tap into all that positivity to keep their day, daily routine right. But I think when children are too young, I mean, in our case, I suppose Gabriel was only about uh, three and Charlie six when they were in Australia. And there was a, a, a point when within the family they said, we should tell the boys that the mum's got cancer. And I was against that because I just thought, luckily Karen went on for seven of those years. But imagine if the boys from a very young age, every day had to deal with the fact, my mummy's got cancer, my mummy might die. I just felt it was too much responsibility. Whereas in Brenda's case, her children were older. And of course you have to explain. And as with Kate, her children are older as well. So yeah. it depends on the situation, really. I think every family is going to deal with these tests mm. in the way that suits them. And, and I think that's what came out for the documentary last night. Kate and Derek and the kids are doing it the way that works for them. And, and the rest of us can only really stand back. Mm. And, and give them our kind of support and love and, uh, and admiration. And, and obviously, we, we all very much wish that the progress that you started to see towards the end of the documentary um, really does con continue. Uh, Kate Garraway, we are in awe of you.